increase the amount of background noise and feedback, which can be a little bit distracting for both the guest speaker and other attendees. I'd also like you to be able to rename your electronic device with the name you registered for the webinar with. This is very important because we need to have your name for the certificate of attendance. So we'll ask you to rename your electronic device. If you're unable to do this, we can explain how. Just by moving your cursor down to the participants, you should be able to see your name and then you can move the cursor over your name and you have the option of renaming. So it's very important that the name of the electronic device you're observing the webinar matches the name you registered with. And this is very important for your certificate of attendance. Kenrick in the background will be able to interact with you just in case you do have any technical difficulties with sound or picture, or if you're having difficulty renaming your device. During the presentation, Kenrick may interact with you and ask you to change the name on your electronic device. We'll be taking questions today, so please don't prefer to ask any questions asking through the chat function, again, at the bottom of the screen. If you're unfamiliar with this, just move your cursor down to the bottom of the screen, into the chat, and you can type your question in. You can ask questions at any time you want during the webinar, but the majority of questions will be answered at the end of the presentation, which is approximately 35 to 40 minutes time. So if you do have any questions, I said, please don't hesitate to contact Kenrick and Kenrick will be able to engage with you. To receive your certificate of attendance, you must be able to attend the full duration of the webinar. We also have three polls, and this is to interact with you during the presentation. So the presentation today, we're very welcome to have Dr. Shah, Dr. Shah Faraz bin Othman, and Dr. Shah Faraz is coming from Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. And Dr. Shah is an optometrist and head of school and assistant professor of optometry. And was also faculty of medicine and sciences in the UCSI University in Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. So thank you very much for our guest speaker for coming along today. So hopefully you can all hear and see everything okay. And what I'm going to do without any further ado is pass over to our guest presenter, Dr. Shah. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Locken, uh, for a very kind introduction. Uh, a very good uh, evening, everyone. Uh, greetings from Malaysia, greetings from Kuala Lumpur, and greetings from UCSI University. Here I am from a small country, from the Southeast Asia. Uh, I would like to share uh, my experience and knowledge for the past 17 years as an academics, uh, giving the title, uh, Optometrist Profession or Occupations. So the presentation outlines, uh, first I'm going to introduce introductions of what has been by the professions uh, by uh, looking at uh, one of the movie. And then we're going to discuss on what does it mean by profession versus occupations. And next, we're going to look at the history and development of the professions. And we're going to look on the, what does it mean by the professionals uh, in a career, okay? And the last one, we're going to see what are the present challenges faced by the professions. So, right, introductions. So if you remember the movie, uh, The Three Hundreds, when uh, King Leonidas, the Spartan kings, led the 300 Spartans for a battle of Thermophiles, uh, battles against the god king Xerxes. So he was uh, interrupted uh, by the Acadians that would like to join uh, for the war match. So what happened was uh, when the Acadian looks at the numbers of the Spartan, which is lower compared to theirs, so they have doubt on that. So what did King Leonidas say to them? You, by pointing one by one, only three of them, what is your professions? One gentleman says, I'm a potter. And then he turned to the other one, you Acadians, what is your professions? And he answers, I'm a sculpture. And the, the third person said, what is your professions? 
And that guy, the gentleman answers, I'm a blacksmith. So when he turned around to the Spartans, Spartans, what is your profession? What did they answer? Anyone can answer that? So they answer what? Um, um, um. So that means that a profession is something special, okay? which is differs than the occupations. So let's see what are the difference between the professions and occupations. As we can see that the words occupation and professions are interchangeable. Yeah? The professions and occupations are almost the same and with only minor differences between them. So as a professional, we need to be clear on that, the difference. Where the profession needs an extensive training and specialized knowledge, however, the occupation does not. And the profession can be called an occupation when a person is paid for his particular skills and his deep knowledge. Yeah? And the persons that engage in occupation are not paid for their knowledge, but only for what they produce. So unlike a person's engaged in an occupation, a professional has to undergo higher education. So that's why a professional like us, optometrists, pharmacists, dental surgeon, just to name a few, we need to go for higher level of education. So therefore, a profession tends to be autonomous. Whereas for occupation, no one has autonomous power. He or she is supervised by another person. So it's very, very important, guys, because along our career, especially for the future of commerce, you need to know the differences. In a developed country with a strong advocacy, uh, for example, in Northern America, uh, it is very clear where the profession is well protected. But in developing, developing country, uh, like in Southeast Asia, okay, in certain uh, parts of the world, the professions of commentary is still developing. So unlike occupation, a profession demands that the responsibility lies with the individual. The individual yeah? A profession is guided through certain ethical codes and regulated by certain statute. Now let's look on the the history and development of the professions. So you can see that uh, by taking the uh, history in Europe as an example, okay, there is a difference between a profession when they start to differentiate the, between the learned professions and the common professions. So a learned profession, for example, okay, uh, that started in the universities uh, in Europe, it was started with the three uh, program. Okay? The first one is divinity or theology, okay? then it's law and let's by the masters. So the learned profession is actually defined as someone who followed a specific area someone distinguishable from both the ignorant and the jack of all trades. So that's create a distinction between the learned professions, okay? as you said just now, the theology, law and medicines, and the rest, the common professions, silversmith, merchants, etc. Okay? These common professions were trained through apprenticeships. If we look on the historical sequence of professional status in US, the first professions that gained the professional uh, status was surveying. Okay. 
So it's not surprising because uh, the president of the United States, okay, George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, okay, and Abraham Lincoln, they were land surveyor before they enter politics. So you can see that the other professions that gain the professional status, okay, until you can see these, the social workers. Okay. And you can see the difference between these two okay, career, a doctor's versus the footballer. If you can see the differences, to be a doctor, one had to undergo years of study to become a medical doctor, a medical officer. One needs to go five years into a medical school. And another, for example, in Malaysia, they need to go another four years for a specialty training after they have finished their housemanship. However, for a footballer, a professional footballer, they have to certain sporting abilities and skills. And for doctors, they need to complete various stages of training to obtain qualifications from the uh, MBBS or MD program to be a specialist, to be a subspecialist. If you can take an ophthalmologist, for example, he or she has to be a medical officer and there has to be a general surgeon. And he need, if you want to start a specialize in uh, vitro retinal surgeon as a subspecialist, another training. Whereas for a footballer, he doesn't do, need any formal qualifications. Okay. And for doctors, or even our profession and optometrists, we need to continue our training and education and training in throughout their life in practice. We need to maintain our license to practice. For example, in Malaysia, we have the APC, the Annual Practicing Certificate. We need to renew annually. Whereas for the footballer, Okay. He just keep training to maintain their sporting abilities and physical strength. So there's no advanced knowledge all the day. So we can envisage the difference of income between these two careers. Yeah. Right. So just going to bring up the first poll, Dr. Shah. Okay. Start. Our shaver, Kenrick, are you able to launch the first poll? Sorry, we're just having technical issues here at the moment, folks. The poll will be coming in a few moments. We have three polls today to be able to interact with the audience. And the poll has been based on Dr. Shah's presentation. We may have to come back to this poll in a few moments, Dr. Shah, if that's okay. Okay. What I might ask you if you would. Continue. You can return the poll. The, the poll is up. The answering. Oh, sorry. Have you got control of the poll? I don't see it, Henrik. Yes, yes, it's up. Okay. Do you go through the poll, Henrik, if that's okay? Oh, no problem. So here we have um, in which condition you can enjoy the autonomy of working conditions. Is it the as an occupational? Is it as a as a professional? Or is it both of them, or possibly none of the above? So right now we have 12 out of the 21 participants answered already. So we'll give it a few more seconds. Come on, guys, what, what, what do you guys think the answer is for this year? 
think that the Shah is doing a perfect, a splendid job right now. Okay, we are at 80% now. Okay, so I'm going to be ending the poll now. We are at the two-minute mark. So, poll has ended. So, Dr. Shah, do you see the results? Uh, let me see. Uh, no, I don't. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, okay, yes, so yes, we have it. Okay. So, yeah, yes, uh, most of you answered B, yeah? As a professional, 61%. 61%. Yes. Which is true, yeah? Yes, correct. Right. All right. Lovely. Yeah, lovely. All right, moving on. Right, so when, when there's a, a profession to be established, okay, it started from the occupations. There is a transformation from an occupation to be gained status as a profession. So it all started first and foremost, the establishment of training schools. So usually they start just a vocational college and upgrade to higher learning levels. That's why when you look at the history of geometry, from all the parts of the world, uh, some of it started from the uh, technical college, the uh, polytechnics, then upgrade to the university levels. However, uh, there's still some of the countries still uh, gaining status for the higher learning level in the university. So hopefully if we can unite together all over the world, we can upgrade every one of us at least at the higher learning level, which is called the university level. Okay. The second one is the establishment of a local association. Okay. So meaning that at the uh, district or the state level, okay, there's supposed to be an establishment of the associations. So Malaysia is a small country. Okay? We just straightforward go for the national associations. Yeah? We have the Association of Malaysian of Palm Trees. Yeah? Uh, this is our first and the strongest uh, optometry association in Malaysia. Followed by introduction of codes of professional ethics. So the code of ethics, that is a must for a professions. And then for a developed country with a strong advocacy in optometry in Northern America, for example, the establishment of state licensing laws. For a big countries okay, like uh, Northern America's, USA, and or even in Australia, uh, in different state, they have their own limitations, okay? The license, for example, if I can recall in Oklahoma, okay? uh, the first state allow for the uh, anterior segment laser surgery, okay? Or the few first states in US that allows the usage of therapeutic drugs. And you can see in the uh, last two decades, uh, our colleagues in Australasia, in Australia and New Zealand, a lot to go for therapeutics, including in uh, UK as well, when started with the um, uh, lower level before become the uh, independent prescriber. So these are the transformations before going to the professions. So 
a profession is what you have studied or has a qualification in. Okay? Whereas an occupation is what you are doing in practice. So these are the two different things, although it's overlap. But if you can see clearly, okay, uh, for our professions, okay, which is different than the other O's, okay, uh, namely the uh, opticians okay, or orthoptists. Okay. So these are the, the difference that we need to take into account. So if we look on the uh, definitions by, by the dictionary, Oxford dictionary, a knowledge acquired through traditional route is referred as trades or skill jobs, not as professions. This is what uh, an example that we know earlier, uh, whereby before we gain the profession as an optometrist, uh, it started with a spectacle peddler, yeah? spectacle peddlers. And you need to know, guys, uh, other careers, other occupations, although they are experts in their field, but they are not professionals. Okay? So, namely, carpenter, plumber, painter, uh, footballer, or singer. Okay? So, if we, for, for example, if you ask me okay, whether I can do a workmanship on the wood, like carpenter, I cannot do it. Yeah? So, but they are expert in their field, but they are not professionals. So, a dictionary also defines a profession, okay? which is a vacation or career, especially one that involves prolonged training and a formal qualification. So, that's why you can see that. Um, for many countries, including nations, uh, our bachelor degree, okay, as we are from the British Commonwealth, our degree is a bachelor of optometry. Okay, uh, we're trying to shift from the traditional bachelor of science uh, to a straight bachelor of optometry, like a MD programs or bachelor of dental degree. Okay. So just to highlight, it is a professional. Uh, program. I like a definitions that spell out by a professor Barry Cole when he defines a profession. According to Professor Barry Cole, a profession is a group of people who share common skills and provide a service based on high level knowledge and skill, and who agree that in pursuing their profession, they will always act righteously and properly so that the best interests of those they serve are preserved. Okay. This is a well said definition of professions, okay, which is quite close to our uh, optometry professions. So for the core element of the occupation is based upon mastery of a complex knowledge and skills. And its members profess a commitment to competence, integrity, and morality. Altruism and the promotions of the public good within their domain. So this is a really a higher commitment for a professional. And these commitments form the basis of a social contract between the profession and society which in return grants the profession the right to autonomy in practice and the privilege of self-regulations. So it's very good to see, good to hear. So for a country that have a strong advocacy for the professions, kudos to them. But for a country still developing, gaining the rights, of the Octopus Depressions, okay. our journey is ongoing. So the professions and their members are accountable to those service and to society. 
So if you look on a book uh, written by Buchan and Childress, there is a blurring of boundaries between the traditional profession and occupations. So he suggested that to distinguish educated professionals from those who earn a living by engaging in occupations, then it's a need for a more limited and a better control definitions of a professions. If it looks uh, by studied by Jones, okay? he stated that for a professions okay, uh, which is false in profession, therefore dentistry, pharmacies, optometry also can suit into these Jones definitions. So according to Jones, that a profession has a well-defined body of knowledge. Okay? For a professional, there's no market-based competitions. A professional enjoys autonomy of working conditions. They possess code of ethics. They have altruistic motive and to serve the public. And for a professional, they undergone substantial training, regulated and controlled. Okay. So these are the characteristics spelled out by Jones. Whereas, okay, another researcher, Amson, has the same definitions of professions and professionals uh, with John, however, his definition is limited to a professionals like lawyers, accountants. Okay? So that's why you can see that all the attributes are about the same, ex except this one. Yeah. So according to Emerson's, a professionals enjoys higher social status and wealth. So this is actually contradict the definitions by Jones, who stated that a professions have an altruistic motive and to serve the publics. Okay. So it depends on the definitions or the characteristics of a professions on the different professionals. Now let's look on the professionals discussing on the attributes of the professionals discussing, okay? Uh, before that, yeah, we go for another poll questions. Poll questions number two. Yeah? I pass it to the uh, organizing committee. Okay, sure, sure. And here, guys, we have poll question number two here coming up, and it's now launched. So, guys, professionals, are they governed by code of ethics, professed commitment to competence, integrity and morality, altruism, or all of the above? So, guys, we're going to give it a 30 seconds here. 40 seconds which one do you think it is do you think it's the code of ethics the professed commitment to competence integrity and morality altruism or the last option all of yep I remember, guys, these polls will also assist us with the certificate of attendance. So ensure to get your answers in. Lovely, we have around 60% already. Perfect. We are ending the poll now. And let's share the results. 
So here we have all of the above 71%, and that is correct, guys. Code of ethics, profess commitment to competence, integrity, morality, altruism. They are all part of being a professional. They are all governed by this. Okay, so I'm going to stop the results now. Back to you, Dr. Shah. Thank you very much. So moving on. <clears throat> So when we talk about the professionals, okay, in the professions, a member of a profession okay, is described as the standards of education and training skills. Okay. So to be a professional, okay, there is a standards, skill, and education. Okay. And for a professional, we are subject to strict codes of conduct, preserving rigorous ethical and moral obligations. And the standards of a practice and ethics are agreed upon and maintained through a recognized professional organization or body. That's why as a professional, we must maintain our merit through this continuing education, we can call it as COE, okay, uh, continuing optometric uh, education, we need to maintain a few marks, few points before we allowed to renew our license, okay, license to practice. So if we are looking at the other uh, professions, okay, we always start, we always refer to the medical professions. If you look on this uh, Royal College of Physicians, okay, the RCTs, they defines medical professionals, okay, which signifies the set of values, behaviors, and relationships that underpins the trust the public has in doctors. So the medicine is a vocation in which a doctor's knowledge, clinical skills and judgment are put in the service of protecting and restoring human well-being. So this purpose is realized through a partnership between patient and doctor, one based on mutual respect, individual responsibilities and appropriate accountability. So this medical prof professionalism we adopt and adapt in our optometric professionalisms. Okay. When it involves the to commit or the commitment to the society, okay, in their day-to-day -day practice, doctors are committed to integrity, compassion, altruism, continuous development improvement and also excellence. In terms of commitment to society as well, okay, doctors work in partnership with members of wider healthcare team, namely staff nurse, medical assistant or paramedics, uh, optometrists, dietitian, nutritionists. These values which underpin the science and practice of medicines form the basis for a moral contract between medical professions and society. So if uh, we refer to the uh, reports by the College of Optometrists eh, that was uh, conducted in uh, 2014, about seven years ago, okay, a professional in optometry, which is quite interesting a report uh, uh, conducted by the College of Optometrists. So I summarize the fish of the future of professionalism issues that are faced by uh, the optometrist, uh, although it's uh, mainly refers to the UK optometrist, but we can uh, use this as a reference uh, to our home countries. 
So according to the report, the optometry profession is going through significant change at the moment. And professionalism is seen as a key to the future, the cornerstone of optometry. So that's why okay, for a countries where the profession of optometry is still developing, we have to be stand united okay, to make sure that our profession in our home country will gain its uh, professional status at least the same as, I may say, dentistry, if not the same as medicines. Okay, uh, we stop for another, I think the last question, poll question, yeah? Uh, uh, Mr. Organizing Committee, Mr. Correct. Chairman. Mm -hmm. Correct, this one is the last poll. So guys, the third poll here, launched. Do you see the change in the optometry profession in your country, the changes that we are talking about currently? Do you think that in your country, in your specific region, have you seen any changes, significant changes in the optometry profession? Or maybe you're not sure at the moment. That's the last option there. I think we had 63%. We're going to give it 20 seconds again. Which one do you guys think is applicable for your region, for your area? I know we have some people possibly from Malaysia, some people from India, more the eastern side of the world here today. Do you see any changes, significant changes in the optometry profession in your country? So we're going to end the poll here and share the results. So Dr. Shah, we see 56%. They do see changes in the optometry profession currently. Some of them uh, unsure okay. and some of them, 25% of them say no changes currently. Well, I'm hoping that the I am not sure is still in the, in the pipeline of becoming an optometrist here. So... Uh, definitely, definitely. <laughs> Hopefully, it's not a practicing optometrist. It's still at still at a studying level. Yeah. Yeah. Student. Yeah. Student level. Yeah. Okay. So we end there. Okay. So moving on. So what are the present challenges for our professions? Uh, I know these uh, challenges uh, depends on. Uh, which continents or which countries, okay? Uh, it's not uniform to all countries because we know that, uh, as I said earlier, uh, few countries, okay, have their professions uh, with a strong advocacy, okay? But uh, some countries or many countries, okay? Including Malaysia, okay? We still uh, gain, fight, okay? Uh, to have uh, a strong advocacy in our uh, professional status. But you can see in the in, in, in general, yeah, uh, the present challenge uh, with IT revolutions and uh, knowledge could be easily assessed. Professional is facing a great challenge. As you can see that uh, from process by doctors to assess by anyone. As you can see that uh, patients, clients, uh, before they see you, before they visit your office or practice, they already made their homeworks about types of glaucoma, uh, types of uh, ERMD, okay? type of refractive anomaly. So the question is, the challenge is, how do doctors or professional in healthcare, including us, yeah, defend themselves or strengthen their aspect of professionalism? 
So actually this is also involve the human touch. As we know that now, uh, the contact lenses can easily assess uh, from the internet or from the night market, especially in Malaysia uh, or some countries. Okay, guys, this uh, uh, end of my uh, my lectures, or oh, sorry, my presentations. Okay, uh, these are a few references uh, taking from uh, my lectures for the uh, undergraduate uh, in the universities. Okay, but I have to add uh, some of it for the uh, presentations. Um, so, but you need to know. In terms of professionalisms, okay, uh, we, as we learn, okay, in our university days, we always been reminded by our lecturers, uh, where we attend for uh, any seminars or conference. Uh, we, as the uh, primary eye care providers, or we as the gatekeeper of the eye care professions, or our American colleague like to use. We as the GP of the eye. Okay. So I throw back the questions to you. Optometrists, professions or occupations? Okay. You know the answer. Thank you very much. Okay. So I open I open for the questions. That's wonderful, Dr. Shah. Thank you very much. Welcome. And I uh, really enjoy that. It was a very exciting and uh, engaging presentation. You've given us lots of information to take back to your general practice, and our studies. So what I'd like to be able to do is open the floor to some questions. So we have some questions which have been submitted by our audience. Kenrick, would you be able to go through some of the questions have been to Dr. Shah? Yeah, sure, definitely. I'm um, currently in the chat there isn't any so what we'll do we'll go through some from the registration so we we allow them to ask questions through the registration so one yeah. of the first questions we have is can optometrist become an ophthalmologist dr shah how uh, about in your country how, do you know the process for that uh okay if, if i can uh, recall back the questions eh? can optometrists become an ophthalmologist Correct. The answer is yes or no. Yeah. The answer is yes. If you take a medical degree after you obtain your bachelor uh, op optometry degree. So I've known a few optometrists in Malaysia after he, after they completed their optometry degree, uh, in UK, for example, okay, uh, they continue their MBBS or medical degree another five years. Then they go for the specialty in ophthalmologist. Yes, that's the answer for yes. The answer for no is you cannot uh -huh. become an ophthalmologist after you obtain the optometry degree. Optometry degree is not a channel for you to become an ophthalmologist because Optometrist, same as dentistry or veterinary medicines, is the uh, academic disciplines in the universities, which is the first than medicines. Yeah? So you need to know that that's also the same to other profession. Can, can audiologists become an ENT surgeon? Can a psychologist become a psychiatrist? Can a just uh, the, the other example as well. Yeah, can uh, can uh, a pharmacist become a pharmacologist? Yes, that, for that it's okay. Yeah, but the, the other the previous example is much more because uh, the healthcare professions, although in in line with the medical professions, but uh, it has its own academic disciplines in the university. Correct. Okay, and that goes definitely. Yeah, definitely answered that one. That goes into another question here. So what field um, can the optometrist go into in terms of specialization? Okay, that's a very good answer. I believe this is uh, a question from the 
the future gatekeeper of eye care professions, the students. Eh? I like to use the I like to use, to use the term the future gatekeeper, not the students. Yeah, instead, just to to inspire students. Yeah, I've done it for many many years. Eh? So, uh, optometrists upon graduation, you become the the general optometrist. Okay, uh, seems like upon graduating from dental school, you become a dentist, or now they use the dental surgeons. Okay. I think our profession in U US as well uh, used to be called uh, optometrists uh, in uh, Northern Islands or in Scotland, it used to be called ophthalmic opticians. Okay. But I think some 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 uh, territories still use the ophthalmic opt optician. A few years back, I went to, to Glasgow for a conference, uh, still got this ophthalmic opticians title mm -hmm. in the practice. So you can see our colleagues in Northern America, uh, in few states, they have redefined their title. They're not be called an optometrist, they are called optometric physicians. Yeah. So come back to, to the to the question just now. When you finish your uh, degree in optometry, either a bachelor level or a doctorate level, depends uh, which country you are coming from. Um, you can specialize in the following specialties, namely sports vision, specialty contact lens, low vision, uh, advanced optometric care, uh, geriatric optometrists, pits optometrists, yeah? uh, public health uh, optometrists. Okay? These are the specialty in uh, optometry. For the subspecialty, Hopefully, we'll get in the future. Okay? So we, we are yes, not yes. we are not we are not go until our sub specialty yet. Yeah? But hopefully, mm -hmm. in the future, yes. Okay, perfect. Hopefully, you get some sub specialties in the future, guys. Uh, another question here. I'm not sure if you'll be able to answer this one. After a bachelor's of optometry from India, do you know the steps to apply further in another country? So if I can uh, repeat back the question, after once obtained a bachelor degree in optometry in India, mm -hmm. can he apply for a further study? Is it? In another country. To, so to another country. practice in another country. Or to practice in another country. Correct. Uh, the answer is yes or no. Yes and no. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the answer is yes if and only if the countries that he or she want to practice uh, allow the list of qualifications or doesn't have a strong advocacy uh, that this uh, optometrist for that uh, country, namely India in your case, to practice in uh, his or his, uh, his countries. For example, is if you are graduate from Bits, Bila Institute of Technology Science in Pilani, and you want to practice in Mauritius. Okay, so you need to check in Mauritius whether uh, the Mauritius the Mauritius allowed uh, graduates from India to practice or not. If yes, you must fulfill another uh, list of uh, uh, documentations. For, for Malaysia, if you graduate from other countries and you are not a Malaysian citizen, okay, you are not allowed to practice in Malaysia uh, because it is immigration de uh, department policy whereby for the optometry profession, it's not critical for them to, to practice in Malaysia unless you are practicing as academics in a teaching institution. So my colleagues in UCSI University, uh, there's a Mr. Bandari from Nepal. Yeah? So he's uh, one of academics in, in, in our school. Am I answering uh, the questions? Yes, okay. definitely. Uh, thank thank you. you so much for those um, insights there. And I believe as well, some of the other areas, um, they would have to do certain board exams as well in those different countries there. 
So Mr. Shah, I'm just gonna um, stop your share. Yes, okay. And I just wanna pull a few questions from over here. So can you confirm that you're seeing the screen there? If you share up. Yes, uh, this is from Ai Chi Yong, yeah? Uh, maybe Yong Ai Chi. Eh? Uh, can I read the question again? Let me see. Uh, do you think that's... Oh, I, I, I thought that I was reading one of the questions from the audience just now. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Sure. So can 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 we go back to the questions from the chat? Would you like me to read it? Yes, yes. Yeah. So this question is how to encourage fresh generation optometrists to practice professionally, and not solely looking at it as an occupation. We were taught comprehensive modules in our degree. However, most of us less practicing what we have learned in our real working environment. So in school, they would have done a lot, but in the work environment, so much. Well, it's a very good question from uh, uh, Miss Yong, Miss Ai Chi Yong, eh? Yong. I think Yong Ai Chi, yeah? Um, assuming that she's from Malaysia, maybe. Yeah, as you can see that uh, in Malaysia, the, the advocacy in our profession is still ongoing. Okay, we stay start strong enough. Uh, however, we prepare for the futures. Uh, the curriculum and compass uh, of professional practice, including the therapeutics uh, and also the uh, ethics, are uh, there in uh, the in, uh, all optometric curriculum in, in optometric school in Malaysia. However, it's up to these graduates to think what they can do to the society instead of what are the regulating body do to our professions. So that's why uh, it is very important for the students to sort uh, continuing education to motivate them. Because you can see that the routine works of optometrists, especially in the shop, if they run the practice and shopping mall, it's more like commercialism instead of professionalism. That's why I always say to the, to the students, uh, in the future, when you practice, you must define properly. Do not use customer. Address them as the patients or clients, not customer. You prescribe and dispense lenses. You don't sell spectacles. You run your optometry practice or optometry clinic. You are not run an optical shops. This will motivate you. That makes you different than other practitioners. Okay. So this is to allow you to practice more professional. For example, you must differentiate uh, the spectacle or the low uh, or the visual aids. Uh, then the consultation fee, okay? Because I believe that uh, most practitioners, uh, especially in Asia, particularly in Southeast Asia, they combine the consultation fees and the uh, visual aids together. Okay? So we must make it different. So hopefully that's answered the questions. Uh, so go back to the questions, uh, number one. Okay, uh, from the organizing committee. Oh, Miss Miss Young got the answer there. So this is question one here on this end. <clears throat> Do you think that this would be the same throughout optometry in different countries or in the world? Optometry, geography, um, in terms of uh, geographical differences. Do you think there are differences there? The answer is yes. Yeah, because it's not because of geographical difference. It is because the opto-political difference in different countries around the globe. Okay? For example, uh, in countries where the optometry programs is run at the 
doctorate level, I mean a profession doctorate, it's not the PhD. Eh? Uh, the title doctor okay, helps a lot in bringing them the same level as other healthcare professions. So uh, to differentiate between the British Commonwealth, particularly in UK, uh, whereby the profession of optometry, even though it's a bachelor level, but the publics are more aware what is the difference between the optometrists and opticians. However, in many parts of Asia, uh, particularly in, uh, uh, in Southeast Asia, okay, our professions is still uh, not really clear by the publics. Okay? So some of them still thought that there's no difference between an optometrist and opticians. Okay? That's why you must make sure that uh, the National Association have to play a big role in upgrading the professions in educating the public. Oh, okay, perfect, perfect. Okay, <clears throat> so here we have question two. As we see more females entering the profession of optometry across the world, do you feel that people judge their healthcare professional as being professional or an occupation based on gender? Do males prefer to see males, females prefer see female okay this is actually uh, not just a, a challenge in optometry profession it's also a challenge in healthcare and medical profession you can mm -hmm. see in every part of the university around the globe uh, more females in healthcare and medical professions and more male in engineering and applied science okay mm -hmm. so that's why you can see more females uh, in this field okay including optometry compared to male okay however okay i don't think this is an issue because although obstetric and gynecology okay is yeah. for females but you can yeah. see many females prefer to see a male ong yeah. specialist okay yeah. so this is not really an issue Okay, perfect, perfect. So thank you so much, Dr. Shah, for answering those questions there. Unfortunately, in the interest of time, we may not have answered all the questions, but if you have any further questions, we can direct them to Mr. Shah's email. Uh, Mr. Shah, do you have your email set up there by chance? Can you put it in the chat box? Uh, you can see on the last slide, yeah? Your slide? So I, I share back my slides. Uh, sure. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, so this so is the guys, fun view of the of the uh, UCSI University in Kuala Lumpur campus. Yeah, mm -hmm. beautiful. So you can see on right here is our optometry clinics, uh, uh, namely UCSI Optometry Center. This is not really clear. So okay. you can email me shafaris at UCSI University dot my. I am the head of school. Uh, uh, optometry. We are at the youngest optometry school in the nation. Yeah, there are six wow. optometry schools in Malaysia, three in public university and three in private university. Okay, okay, lovely. So you can direct any questions to Mr. Shah's email. Now I will hand you over to our first and main moderator, Mr. Lorcan, to close us off. Thank you, Kenrick. Thank you, Dr. Shah, for answering those questions. So, unfortunately, we may not have had a chance to answer all of our questions, but as Kenrick said, please don't hesitate to contact Dr. Shah by email, and he'll endeavour to get back to you as quick as you can. So, thank you very much for your attendance today for the World Optometry webinar. We have enjoyed your company, and um, we'd like you to be able to fill in a small feedback survey. We'll be emailing that to you shortly after the presentation. Your thoughts are very important to us. I would like to hear from you what you thought about today's presentation and what maybe you'd like to see in future presentations. So once again, thank you to Dr. Shah for attending. Thank you for attending today's webinar. 
The next webinar with the Thank World Optometry will be advertised on our social media channels. So please contact us on Instagram and don't forget to interact with us. So until next time, thank you very much. And I'll bring this presentation to a close.